Okay guys, so today we're just going to do a tutorial of uh, how to build a rocket and an overview of most of the parts in the game. So if you notice in the VAB, or the vehicle assembly building, this is what it looks like now. It was different from KSP-1. But um, you'll find the pods, probes, and if you scroll down, cockpits, rovers, and these are all command or control vessels. So um, <coughs> basically you're going to need one of these, any one of these, to control your rocket. At least one even more works just as well but not necessarily better but you're gonna need at least one to control your rocket all the time even if it separates you're gonna need one on your separated part of the rocket if you want to control it so we have landing cans another landing can uh wow this is a landing can too and we have cockpits well technically these are cockpits but we have command pods here and um this is a mark one to mark uh, zero, I think this is this size is called Mark Zero. This size is called Mark One, and um, this is a Mark One to Mark Three, Mark One size to Mark Three size. This holds three people. This holds one person or Kerbals. I might call them people. I might call them Kerbals. They're interchangeable. And um, this holds five people. And this is a Mark One and this is a Mark Five. Even though it says Mark Three to Mark Five, shouldn't really be called that. But you get the point. Probes are basically command pods that have no Kerbals in them. So you don't need a Kerbal in these rockets. You could have Kerbals in rockets, sort of um, crew modules, which we'll get to later. But um, right now, you can just worry about um, controlling your aircraft and um, spacecraft or whatever. But um, yeah, these are pretty much your command pods with no Kerbals in them. And cockpits are pretty much command pods that are just meant for planes usually and rovers are well made for rovers but you can use them for other stuff like this command seat you can use for pretty much anything i've seen it used many 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 times in case people one for light aircraft small air small spacecraft small aircraft and stuff so that's our review of command we're just going to use the mark one to mark zero or just mark one command pod now and um, if you right click on it, you'll see that it has torque authority, electric charge, and monopropellant. Torque authority is basically how much the reaction wheel inside of this command pod is, uh, has authority to be used. So you want to keep that at 100 most of the time. If uh, you have too many reaction wheels or too many command pods with too many reaction wheels and you want to slow it down, you can slow down the torque authority on some of them. But um, you generally want to leave that on. Same with electric charge. That's pretty self-explanatory but um you know not a lot of people know that you need a lot to charge for stuff in this game I, I definitely didn't know that when I started this game and uh well, when I started KSP1 back in like 2014 and um monopropellant is a type of fuel which we will get to in just a second and then it goes on to our next section which is fuel tanks Methalox is the predominant fuel tank in Kerbal Space Program 2. It has a lot, a lot, a lot of fuel tanks in this game. And they're all different sizes, shapes, and used for different things. Like this is used for, who knows, whatever you want to use it for. And this is used for the same thing. But um, if you come down, you'll see just methane. What's the difference between methane and methalox? Well, methane is a fuel, and it's combustible. As you know, if you ever try putting a light up to your butt and farting. <laughs> and methalox is basically methane with liquid oxygen. Hence the name methalox, liquid oxygen. So if you look on screen, you'll see a um, triangle of what you need to start a fire. You need fuel, oxygen, and energy slash heat to start a uh, fire. That goes for anywhere, anyhow, no matter what. And it's a big misconception that oxygen is combustible. It's just required for heat. But um, yeah, if you put oxygen to a flame, it will expand the flame drastically because that's one of the limiting factors in most flames in real life. But um, yeah, so methalox is basically just fuel and oxygen mixed together. Methane is just fuel, and you may wonder what would you need that for? Oh, they're just oxygen tanks? And if you look down, you don't see any it's just oxygen tanks. So, what's methane used for? Well, it's used for methane engines. And, um, where are they? 
jet engines, methane engines. So basically, jet engines, the way they work is they get their air, or they get the oxygen from the air through air intakes found in aerodynamics. So we can worry about that later, probably for tutorial part two, how to build a plane. But um, tutorial part one is focused on rockets mainly, so we're not going to use that. But um, if we go back, Methalox is the predominant fuel tank in Cable Space Shuttle 2. We're going to add a, where is it? Looks like small, maybe. Small fuel tank. And we're going to add an engine, um, a Methalox engine. And the reason I chose this fuel tank is just because it, it fits. I could choose this one, or I could choose this one, or I could choose this one. But this one seems like an okay amount of fuel. We could go bigger, but it would be harder to control a little bit. But um, we don't really need that. And um, engines. So engines come in many shapes and sizes too. Extra small to extra large. Er, extra small to large. There is no extra large yet. The, but there are extra large engine mounts, which you can mount several engines too. But that's also later on in the video. So um, we're going to make a Methalox engine, or we're going to use a Methalox engine. My favorites are the Reliant, the Swivel, and the Vector. The Vector and the Swivel have, well, vectoring on them, engine ve or bus vectoring, I think it's called. And yeah, it's right there on the, I can't put my mouse over it, but if you go over, if you look over here where the description is, you'll read the description, it says, thrust vectoring, a full 3 degrees of thrust vectoring, well this has um, 10 degrees of thrust vectoring, but um, if you notice under the description there's a bunch of uh, stats about the um, engines, we're not going to focus on them just yet, but um, I will explain them, so impact tolerance, uh, max temperature and mass, or maybe not mass, but max temperature, impact tolerance, those are basically the conditions that the engine will just disintegrate in. Max thrust at one atmosphere is max thrust at sea level. And rockets in real life and in Kerbal Space Program 2 have more thrust in vacuums than in atmosphere. That's because of um, atmosphere except, or I think it's rocket separation, something with separation in it. But um, hey guys, future Rob here, and um, just want to clarify that. Uh, Expansion or separation like I was talking about earlier. Uh, I don't want to link the video here by Scott Manley, uh, the one only. And um, it's titled Why Rocket Exhausts Look the Way They Do. And it's basically just a video explaining um, why engine bell shapes are shaped bigger in vacuum, smaller in atmosphere. And um, yeah, if you want to learn more about that, just click this video right here. Um, some engines are still optimized for sea level. So if you notice, this has more thrust at sea level. This is less thrust at sea level. But if you look at the ISP on one atmosphere versus the ISP in vacuum, which stands for specific impulse, ISP, um, it's higher in a vacuum on the swivel than it is on the Reliant, even though they're pretty much the exact same engine. If I put them side by side, you can see what I mean. So, yeah. And um, the Reliant can't vector like the swivel can, hence the name of swivel. But, um, yeah, ISP stands for specific impulse. It's basically efficiency of an engine in Kerbal Space Program 2. 280 seconds is pretty efficient for a sea level. 260 is less efficient at sea level. Which is weird. Anyways. Some engines are meant for sea level, like this one. Some engines are meant for vacuum. Oh, okay. An aerospike engine. That's meant for sea level. 300 at atmosphere, 280 at atmosphere. Some are meant for vacuums, like um, the... Where is it? The Poodle engine. That has 340 seconds ISP in vacuum, which is a very efficient engine. This is one of the best engines in the game. Same with this engine. This engine has 385. A little bit weaker than the Poodle, but if you look in size, medium versus small. Oops. Sometimes the small engines might just be the only feasible way of using um, an efficient space engine on your rocket. But um, you may wonder, why not just choose the one with the highest ISP, like the Poodle engine, or this engine, the Terrier engine. Well, we need thrust, and um, if you look, this has 30 kilonewtons of thrust in one atmosphere, while this has 
188 kilonewtons of thrust in one atmosphere. So this is a lot stronger. This is even stronger, but like I said, this one can't thrust vector. So engines, they get pretty complicated pretty fast. But um, hopefully you could just stay with me for now. I do a lot at you, but it's not too much to handle if you could, you know, we watched the video a few times maybe at all, but um, I explained it pretty well if you ask me. But um, uh, solid fuel boosters, why don't I talk about those now? So solid fuel boosters are basically liquid fuel or methylox boosters, except you can't throttle them or slow them down or stop them once they start. You have to go through the whole fuel tank for the booster to stop. But that doesn't mean it doesn't have its uses. It's really useful for putting on like the side of a rocket like that. But um and then separating it off when it has um no fuel in it. So that's called staging, which we'll get to later on in this video. Jet engines, I think I explained already, they're methane engines. They get their air from the atmosphere, or they get their oxygen from the atmosphere, so they don't really work when you leave the atmosphere. Monopropellant engines, we'll get onto that. Actually, right now, we'll get onto it right now. So, monopropellant is basically a fuel that's found in command pods. It also has its own fuel tanks. Monopropellant down here. And um, basically, they're used for. Um, well, this one's an actual engine that you can put on the side of a spacecraft and use it as your main throttle. But the main purpose of monopropellant is for use in um, reaction control system thrusters or RCS. Now, you find this in utility. But um, it has basically thrusters that you put on the side of the vehicle that push it. Like if this thruster was turned on right here, it would push the vehicle that way. And um, to put it up here, it would rotate the vehicle that way. If I put it down here, it would rotate the vehicle that way. Same goes if I put it on all the sides of the vehicle. But, um, you know, this is pretty much the same thing, except it can push up, down, left, and right. And this can push outwards. This is an RCS thruster with liquid fuel, or... Yep, Methylox microengine. Okay, just double checking. Yeah, this is a Methylox uh, reaction control system thruster. It doesn't use the main throttle of your rocket, but... It uh, is a reaction, it is a methylox engine. And um, we'll get to the rest of this stuff later. But while we're here, we'll talk about parachutes because they are very useful and utilized greatly. So um, we could fly this rocket as it is now, right? But um, it's not going to be a very soft landing. So we're going to put a small little parachute on the top. If you notice, when I do that, if you look in the bottom right over here, it adds something to my rocket staging. This is called the staging to your rocket. And you could add stages as much as you want. You could delete stages as much as you want. Not really, until you get to the last stage. You can't really delete that one. Or, if there's something in the stage, I believe, yep, you can't delete that either. My first time trying this, but I've played Kerbal Space Program 2 for, I think it's 1600 hours now, so, you know. If I miss speak or misinterpret something in this game it's because it's changed from ksp1 to ksp2 or i should say kerbal space program 1 to kerbal space program 2 for those who don't know what ksp means just quite yet but um the first stage is the when you press the space bar when you launch actually you know what let's launch it right now so this is a rocket it's on the launch pad and it's really beautiful i love the graphics on this game it's probably not going to age well about the years but um yeah so this is the launch tower and I, I don't need to explain any of that but um the staging down here this is a engine as you can tell from the icon it says liquid fuel and oxidizer it shows how much you have in it this is our parachute as you can tell from the icon and um that's the second stage so every time we press space bar or if we press this big green button a stage will start and if we press it again the next stage will start and our parachute will deploy. So we're gonna have to time it just right. So if you look on the left here, this is like a, just a little overview of BY. I honestly don't even know what this stuff is yet, but I'm guessing this is solar. This is a board. Oh, this is landing gear. Okay, lights and brakes. Gotcha. This is your throttle here. You used to not be able to drag and click it to change the throttle, I think. But uh, now you can, which is really good. And um, 
this right here is our uh, stability assist. Something ability assist. Anyway, it helps with stability. Um, you can disable it by pressing T, or you can enable it by pressing T. Or you can press this button. Maybe you can't press this button to change it. Well, anyways, you can just press T. But yeah, you see down here it says SAS control. Probably just saying, damn, just get onto the rocket already. Fine, I'll press spacebar. Hey, and then. Yeah, we're gonna skip this game today. Probably gonna be So yeah, rock pretty it. fast. You gotta start seeing the aerodynamic effects and get into the 200, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, yeah, we're going pretty high up, we're already at the series. And we're just going straight up now, I guess this is the first, first time at Rocky is to do. We're looking in the window of our ramp pod. See if we can see anything. Looks like we're just moving the arrow. But anyways, yeah, we're in, um, we're out of the space now. If I'm going correctly, we should be at 70,000 meters, but you technically reach space in Cover 612. But, um, should be an indicator somewhere, but that was a perfect time to show you. And by the way, we're out of fuel now, so we're, just we're not accelerating upwards anymore. We're accelerating downwards at a certain rate. I don't think it's on a plane in a few seconds because this is curving on Earth. But if you press the map button or M, you can see your trajectory. So we're, we're not even nearly at the peak of our trajectory, and we're going to land in the ocean, like I predicted. Crash, that's funny. There's a crash icon now. This is curving. And if you zoom out, you got the moon, you zoom out, you got Minmus, you zoom out even more, you got the whole Kerbal system. And that's Kerbal. That's the Kerbal system. But um, that's for, you know, future missions. We're not going anywhere now. We're just going up and coming straight back down. Simple, nice, easy. So while we're in space, we can do an EVA, which stands for extravehicular activity. And um, I've never done this in Kerbal Space Program 2. But as you see, I'm above 70,000 meters, which means that there's no atmosphere here. So I could float. I'm not going undergoing acceleration, so I'm weightless. If I press R, that enables my reaction control system, or on this case, it's my jetpack. And uh, you can move around with W, A, S, and D. W to go forwards, S backwards, A and D to go left and right. Just like in any other uh, computer video game. Control to go down and shift to go up. So I'm going to maneuver myself back into the uh, spacecraft. You can press F to grab it, space to let it go, and B to board it. So that's pretty much how to do an EVA, how to get into space. And it looks like we're still going up. We're almost at our peak. And um, that's a perfect time to show up time warp. I don't know where it is right here. But if you press the period button on your keyboard, it accelerates time warp. Oh, here it is. We're in two times time warp, and then you get to four times, ten times, then you can see it moving, fifty times. And if you press comma, oops, if you press comma, which is right next to period, right left of it, it'll reduce the time, amount of time we'll be used, all the way down to zero times time warp. But the game is paused. This is a feature of Kerbal Space Program 2 that was not in Kerbal Space Program 1, and I adore it. It's basically where you, um, well, Obviously, the game's pause zero times time warp, no time. It even says game on pause or game pause. And what is this is really useful for is changing a bunch of stuff like limiting your thrust on one engine or disabling gimbal on one engine or, you know, independent throttle where you can change the throttle of it, all that stuff. And you can do it instantaneously compared to in game time because, well, nothing's moving. So, but I'm not going to do anything like that right now. I'm just going to unpause the game, go to time warp. And then, um, as you can see, we're decelerating down at 85,000 meters now, at 700, about 800 meters per second. And um, this is our nav ball right here, I didn't even mention this. So you could turn with your reaction wheels, like I, I'm pretty sure I explained earlier. And um, yeah, you pretty much want to face retrograde, which is this icon right here. That's a retrograde icon. You could also click it right here on SAS, and if SAS is enabled, 
on your spacecraft, which is not in many, not not many, but it's not enabled on many. Sorry, it's not enabled in some spacecraft. It's enabled on most command pods. But I think some probes don't have SAS if um, you don't have communications. It definitely doesn't have SAS. It doesn't have any control. But yeah, we're, we're going into the entry right now. So hopefully we'll see some aerodynamic effects. And um, I'll press spacebar or the green button again to stay in my parachute. So when we get to a certain altitude, our parachute will deploy. Um, and hopefully we'll get some aerodynamic effects. Oh, we didn't got no aerodynamic effects. But parachute deployed. And then the chute will um, open up. Oh no. Oh man. The chute was cut. I don't know why that happened. That did not happen for me anymore. But yep, soft landing. And um, yeah. I guess now's a good time to show the revert capabilities of Coaster Home 2. It's asking me if I want to brush up on the training center, which I definitely don't need to. I am a god at this game, as you can tell from my exquisite landing. But um, we're going to revert to the Vehicle Assembly Building, or VAB. So yeah guys, that's pretty much an overview of how to build the rocket, how to fly a rocket, and overview the parts. Um, we're going to name this Tutorial Craft 1, and we're going to save it as Tutorial Craft 1. These are a bunch of other tries, don't, um, don't look at that. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this first video. Um, let me know in the comments what you want me to go over in the next video. I'm thinking of doing space planes or how to build planes in general. But uh, let me know what you guys really want to learn about KSP2. Let me know if you guys are a little more advanced, already know this stuff, or you know, just want more KSP2 content in general. And with that, with that said, uh, we'll be there. See you.